So how well do you know the photoelectric effect? What I want to do here is quickly review the photoelectric effect, but I encourage you to watch my video on the photoelectric effect for a deeper explanation. But what I want to do here is particularly highlight a common misconception related to the teaching of the photoelectric effect. Now let's quickly review our setup over here. The photoelectric effect, of course, was the explanation that Einstein gave to show that light travels as discrete packets, that which we now call photons. And the experimental setup is shown here. And what we have, of course, is a photovoltaic cell, and we have two plates. And those two plates are connected into a circuit. And of course, we can shine light onto this plate, which causes photoelectrons to be emitted as long as the energy of the photons is greater than the work function of the metal. And what we also have is an ammeter, which allows us to measure the current, which is obviously the rate of the photon electrons that are emitted. And what we also have is a voltage setup here that allows us to apply a stopping voltage. And it allows us to work out the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Because as soon as I get a current, I can do a reverse voltage on it. And at the point I stop it, I will get the value for the kinetic energy of my photoelectrons. And the mathematical formula that all of this is related to is that the kinetic energy of my photoelectrons is equal to the photon energy that arrives minus the work function. Now, imagine now I apply a red light to this situation and I liberate photoelectrons as a result. And I'm gonna ask the question here. If I change the red light to a blue light, in other words, a higher frequency, A, what happens to the kinetic energy of my photoelectrons? And B, if I maintain the intensity of the light, what will happen to the rate of the photoelectrons emitted? Now, most of you will probably understand that if I am talking about the kinetic energy, because I am increasing the frequency of my photons, and of course the work function does not change, I'm gonna increase the kinetic energy of my photoelectrons, and that is fairly obvious. And most people understand that. But what about the rate of photoelectrons emitted, ensuring that I keep the intensity of my light source the same? Does the rate increase, decrease, or stay the same? If you say that the rate of photoelectrons remains the same, you would actually be incorrect. But don't stress, a recent poll that I conducted showed that close to two thirds of respondents answered with that response. But the correct answer is that it decreases. And I'm going to explain. The common misconception here comes with the understanding of what actually intensity means. And many sources have found intensity is often described in terms of the rate of photons that we actually receive. But that's actually incorrect. So what is intensity? Well, intensity is equal to simply the power divided by the area that that surface is experiencing. But what is power? Well, power, of course, is the rate of energy. So therefore, what we have is now we have energy over time, and of course, area is still down the bottom. But where are we getting our energy from? Well, the energy is about the energy of my photons, but it's not just HF, that's one photon. So we have to multiply this by the number of photons that actually strike the metal. And of course, then we divide that by T and A. Now remember what I said, we are increasing the frequency, but we are maintaining the intensity. So the intensity has to remain constant, but we are increasing this value over here. So can you see what's happening? We're not changing the time, we're not changing the area. It means that my number of photons, or the rate, obviously, that I will have, is going to decrease in order to keep the intensity the same. So the answer is, by increasing the frequency and maintaining the intensity, we get less photoelectrons emitted per second. In other words, the current is going to decrease. Now, why again is the issue here? Is because intensity is often related to the number of photons, but it's more than that. It's also based on the frequency as well. And so often when this is taught, it's taught in a way that says, okay, if I increase the frequency, I increase the kinetic energy, no problem. 
But in many times, it's simply taught by, if I want to change the intensity, what happens to the rate of photoelectrons increases? Well, that's going to change. But the assumption there is, is that the kinetic energy or the photonic energy doesn't change. And in this situation, I've actually increased it. And so therefore, highlights our misconception. Well, I hope that's clarified any misunderstanding you've had about the photoelectric effect, if you had one to begin with. Please like, share and subscribe and put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you and consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics Sci. Take care and bye for now.